Welcome to the Audio Fundamentals class. My name is Dr. Rena Walzinger, and I'm excited to be your instructor for this course. You can find me also at renzonemusic.com or rena.com, where you can see some of my videos and the work that I do in the business. I've been a business owner and studio engineer for many years, as well as an instructor in higher education. I have a doctorate in higher, higher education leadership, and I'm also a bass guitar player, a vocalist, and a clarinetist. Also, you can see um, some fun I have at Comic-Con. There's some uh, picture of me photoshopped up by one of my friends. I'm excited to hear about you. So in our first discussion, I'll be asking you about your interest in recording, I'm particularly interested in your past experience, if you're a musician, if not, what you're interested in learning, any gear that you've used, and applications that you're interested in, film, video, video games, things like that. Make sure that you read the syllabus for this course, as there are expectations required weekly. You can see the list here, readings, videos, assignments, the discussion board, and the will there may be quizzes and portfolio items as well. So let's get right into learning some things about recording. Uh, one of the things that I was excited about getting started in recording is building my own studio, which has become very affordable and the most prevalent way that recording happens today in the world because of that. So the recording studio, we'll go over the personal recording studio first, can be anything from an iPhone or an iPad, to a little recording device, to a laptop, and some equipment plugged into it, um, or a permanent station like an iMac or a PC computer plugged into an analog to digital converter. Um, most folks have headphones, uh, monitors so you can listen back to the music, an analog to digital converter, microphones, and cables. Uh, there's It varies basically depending on what you're trying to record, how many people you're trying to record at the same time, the quality you need, and your clients. Commercial studio, on the other hand, is usually a larger studio um, that's quite, quite a bit more expensive, designed for attaining a certain sound. Uh, common studio would be for film scoring, where you have an entire orchestra in there. Uh, recording a score with a director and they're using a lot of microphones, a lot of musicians um, and you have a large um, room for the engineer and with a console or, or a mixing board and other personnel that are listening on the other side. The construction of commercial studios versus personal studios is of course very different but the main thing in the construction is to make sure that the sound is not coming in from the outside and make sure inside that the sound is not bouncing from wall to wall because the recordings will not come out correctly. That's why you see things like sound panels or things called bass traps so that sound does not cancel itself out. We'll be learning about that in this course. Another thing I put down here for commercial studios is ADR or automatic dialogue replacement. That happens when you have dialogue on a script that needs to be replaced due to sounds coming in or other issues or maybe you're just running around and you need to put that dialogue in later. That can be a small studio and that's an area where a lot of my former students have worked because you can build a small studio and have actors in to do that work. So you have the two spaces. One is the tracking room where the musicians are, the singers, whoever's doing the recording and then the other side the control room where you're in there doing the engineering, working on the mix, uh, listening back to what's being recorded. And finally, music doesn't go anywhere without marketing. So we're going to learn about different ways to market music um, in the digital world, especially with uh, most people streaming music now, all the vinyls coming back. But uh, marketing, is, marketing and uh, copyright law are very important. And as long as I'm talking about copyright law, I wanted to quickly show you a website, copyright.gov. And in uh, copyright.gov, they have a thing called the Ecosystem, Electro Electronic Copyright Office, where 
you can copyright all time all kinds of arts. So we're looking at uh, you can see on the screen here. For this, we're looking at um, motion pictures, other digital content, performing arts, visual arts. For a lot of the things that we're doing in this class, it would be performing arts, music, lyrics, sound recording, scripts, and stage plays. And once you click on that, it takes you to the proper form. You'll be uploading a file and filling out your information, including who wrote the material, words and lyrics, um, and just personal information. The reason this is important is because you cannot get paid in this industry on public public music without owning the copyright as a songwriter or producer. So copyright.gov is a really important site. The recording process, there's three main processes. The recording where you're setting up the setting up the microphone, setting up whoever's recording, the personnel, um, making sure that you have everybody in the space where you, where you want them, microphone placement, all of that, um, headphone mixes. So you're recording something, and then overdubbing would be adding parts to that recording. So maybe you're adding a solo or something like that. And then mix down where you take all those elements, all those tracks, and mix it into one project. Once you do that, you'll be doing the final two things, mastering, so taking that that song and basically uh, you know, learn about mastering tools so that you can control the volume, um, any other things to make it sound good for broadcast or radio, and then finally marketing. So one of the things and the thing that attracted me to recording first was doing my own album and not needing to be in a large studio with the hourly rate. And so I started to research gear and that's one of the things that are good to learn while you're taking a class like this. What kind of gear that you need and what type of projects you want to work on. So most of my students have started um, with a laptop and buying some type of analog to digital device that you plug into your laptop. Um, I like um, several companies, but I use um, some devices from Mark of the Unicorn or Motu that um, will, I can plug microphones in and then I can plug headphones in and record several people at the same time. Um, Pro Tools has the M boxes. There's just a whole bunch of stuff. I would recommend looking at, for example, sweetwater.com so you can see different kinds of gear. Um, it's very flexible because you can have a portable studio, bring that wherever you need to, or you can make it more permanent and pretty low in cost. Also, um, as far as project studios, you're going to need to learn a lot about digital marketing, multimedia in the web, making, getting your music onto streaming services or for sale in, for example, the iTunes store so that uh, you can get your music out there. Finally, let's talk about the audio engineer. There are several um, types of jobs in this arena that you can do well, once you learn about sound. Um, I mean, there's the artist, of course, being the musician, um, arranging the music, you can be producing, um, for example, bringing everybody in, selecting the songs, um, focusing on the project, financing it. It could be the engineer, which is the main, uh, the main thing in this course which is understanding the technology behind recording, um, translating what the artist wants to record into a product, uh, placing the musicians, microphones in the proper place, picking the right types of microphones, setting the balances in the recording, capturing the performance, doing the overdubs or additional music parts, mixing the project into a master recording, and archiving and storing the project, so a lot of a lot about data wrangling. You can be an assistant engineer, which would be um, they might be helping with microphones, headphone setup, moving stands around, um, helping musicians with things. You can be a maintenance engineer, which is about upkeeping equipment. A mastering engineer, which is really its own job, where 
Uh, you're mastering the final recording uh, project for um, basically for sale or for streaming or for whatever output you need. There's also DJing and BJing where you're working with audio and video um, live or on the web and studio management jobs. There's a lot of um, work as far as management, booking people, and administration. And then there's, of course, music law, where there's uh, entertainment lawyers, and there's organizations like the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, ASCAP, or BMI, where they will uh, look at the music being played and then pay royalties to the artist and the, and the producers. So there's a lot of, a lot of jobs um, related to this course. I put a site, there are several sites, but um, on Job Outlooks, you can look at careeronestop.org, and I listed a couple of the jobs there, multimedia and sound technician. You can see the jobs that are, how many jobs are available in the area and the salary ranges.